Welcome to lecture 1.6, Combinatorial Proofs. Recall that the technique of proving a combinatorial identity by carefully counting a set two distinct ways is called a combinatorial proof. Now, there are a few other proof techniques that are also called combinatorial proofs, so I'm not going to declare this one to be the definition of it, but it's just one of the most common examples. We have seen a few of these in prior lectures. In this lecture, we will summarize those, and then we'll see some new ones. I also want to take this time to recommend a fantastic book. It's called Proofs That Really Count. And it is by Art Benjamin. Oops. And Jennifer Quinn. And it contains hundreds and hundreds of combinatorial proofs on all sorts of topics. What we'll do in this lecture is mostly just ones involving binomial theorems and binomial coefficients, but their book is a lot more broad than that. So you can buy it on Amazon, or you can likely get it for free at your university library as an ebook. Or maybe they have it themselves. But please check this book out. As I said, it's, it's really cool. I think you'll enjoy it. Now, on to the proofs. We'll start with an easy one. So here we're assuming that k and n are non-negative numbers, and k is no more than n. This will be the assumption for most of these. So here I claim that n factorial is equal to n choose k times k factorial times n minus k factorial. Now recall that our definition of n choose k is the number of size k subsets of an n element set. So that's our definition, and not long after we defined this, we argued why this quantity is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial, n minus k factorial. So this identity is nothing new. We can just get it by multiplying this over the left-hand side. But what I'm going to do is let's suppose we didn't know this, and we just have this definition, and choose k as the number of size k subsets of an element set. Let's, let's prove that this, this has to hold. So now alternatively, if you don't like this subset language, you can think of it as a way to choose a group of k people from a group of n. Now recall that all of these are going to be done by carefully counting a set two distinct ways. Now half the battle is coming up with what set we need to be counting. Now this one's easy because n factorial is sort of shouting at us that we need to be counting permutations. So I'm going to start by writing that down. How many different orderings of the numbers 1 up to n are possible? So I claim that one way to count this is with n factorial. Now, we know that as, as a basic fact. So to the left-hand side is n factorial orderings. We don't need to prove that. But we know that as a fact. And I claim that the right-hand side, so some, pe some people call this like method 1 and method 2, so the right-hand side also counts the number of orderings, but in a slightly different way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the first k um, elements of, of our list, our first k entries, and how many possibilities do we have to pick k numbers to go in here as a set? Well, if there are k numbers, then there are going to be n choose k ways to do that. And so n choose k ways to select what goes here. And then once we have that, there are k factorial ways to order them. And now we have n minus k remaining elements. And there are n factorial ways to order them. So instead of writing this up in formal sentences, I'll let you do that. I'm just going to write down the idea. So I'll draw a picture like this, and then I will I'll write up here 
So n choose k is the number of ways to select which um, k elements come first. And then k factorial is the number of ways to, oops, not the, number of ways to order these k elements. And then we have n minus k remaining elements, and there are n minus k factorial ways to order those. So, there are, so this is the number of ways to order the remaining n minus k elements. So if you're going to turn this in on a homework or on an exam, you know, you need to write this up in complete sentences. And I, I almost did that, but you basically have to copy paste this down here. And remember, a proof is a convincing argument. And hopefully, if I've explained this well enough, you are completely convinced that both of these things are indeed two different ways to count the number of orderings of the number of the numbers 1 up to n. Okay, so that's how these proofs are going to go. Now we're going to do some hard ones from here, but I think you'll enjoy them because, well, this might be a little bit obvious. A lot of the ones that we do might be surprising. Okay, let's get started on them now. Here is our second proposition. n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. Now, by now you probably already know this, but maybe it was a surprise the first time you saw it. So let's, let's prove this combinatorially. Both of these things, I claim, count how many ways can we choose k people from a group of n. Now, the left-hand side, this is almost by definition. It is by definition of n choose k. And that's what we had in the previous combinatorial proof as well. It's not always going to be this simple. It's, it's not always going to be that one of these things is, is basically a definition. But here it is, and that's why I'm doing this one, uh, not first, but second. So the left-hand side counts. So n choose k is, by definition, the number of ways to select k people from a group of n. Now the right-hand side is, counts the number of ways to exclude n minus k people from n. So, you know, think of it like this. If you have a group of, of n people, and you have k here, and you have n minus k here, then choosing or electing k is equivalent to excluding n minus k. So the number of ways to pick k is the same as the number of ways to exclude or pick n minus k. So the right-hand side is that n choose n minus k is the number of ways to exclude n minus k people from, from n people, which is obviously the same as the left-hand side. Okay, here's the third proposition. So here k and n are at least zero. There's no restriction on k or n, which one is bigger. Um, n multi choose k is equal to n plus k minus 1 choose k. Now remember that we, we just saw this recently in a previous lecture, um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I did say in this lecture that I would start out by reviewing some of the combinatorial proofs that we, we've seen and use that to motivate some of the new ones. So here, the thing that we want to count is the number of ways to choose k elements from a set of n if repetitions are allowed. So my favorite way to think of this is choosing k, number of ways to choose k sodas from a vending machine with n flavors. So if, if you prefer, sometimes it's easier in a combinatorial proof, instead of saying elements, you can say sodas from a vending machine of n flavors. 
if repetitions are allowed. So you can get multiple Cokes. Okay, so the left-hand side counts this by definition. So by definition of n multi-choose k. And then the right-hand side, we're going to count this differently. Remember, this is the bars and stars thing um, from a previous lecture. So, so we can use k stars for, for sodas and n minus 1 bars for dividers. And then every way to do this can be represented uniquely using a combination of, er, using a string of, of bars and stars. So maybe we get, this is maybe, this is Coke, and we get one Coke, maybe we get two Sprites, we get three root beers, maybe this one is Fanta, we get no Fantas, and maybe we get uh, two of these and one of these. So every way to do this is uniquely represented using a string of bars and stars. If you haven't seen this before, then you skipped some of my lectures, so please go watch, or so please go back and watch the lecture on multi-sets. So this is a, a string, so the number of, of ways to do this is the number of strings of length n plus k minus 1 with n plus 1, sorry, n, n minus 1 bars and k stars. And we know that this is equal to n plus k minus 1, choose k. So we've counted the same thing a different way, and we get this identity. The next proposition is something else we've seen. So if we add up n choose k from k equals 0 up to n, then we get 2 to the n. So recall how this is done. We're going to count two different ways the number of subsets of an n element set. So the first way we're going to do this, I'm going to call this method 1. So instead of saying left-hand side and right-hand side, I'm just going to say method 1 and method 2 because you know, some books, some writing styles use this and you should see more than one. So method 1, inspired by the left-hand side, is, well, the number of subsets is going to be the number of size 0 subsets plus the number of size 1 subsets plus the number of size 2 subsets plus all the way down to number of size n subsets. And of course this is equal to n choose 0 this is n choose 1, this is n choose 2, this is, up, this is n choose n. So if we add this up, we get, we get the left-hand side right here. So that, that's the first method. And then, of course, the second method is, I think it's fine just to say we know that the answer is 2 to the n. Or if you want to say a little bit more, we can say that it's the number of n question or n question true false quizzes where for each for the ith question we ask is the ith element in the set yes or no. So method oh I forgot to say method method two is you know I'm just going to say it is a basic basic fact that this is to the end. You can explain it if you want to, but I think it's fine to say that. Here's our next example. Now I'm going to actually prove something a little bit weaker. So this, this theorem, I'm going to say that for any natural numbers x and y, and n at least 1, although it really holds for n equals 0 as well, but it's trivial then, x plus y to the n is the sum from 0 up to n of n choose k, x to the k, y to the n minus k. Now recall that we did this earlier. 
we didn't have the restriction that x and y had to be whole numbers. Now, x and y could be variables, could be complex numbers, could be anything else. So this is actually a weaker statement, but I'm going to use a combinatorial proof to do it. Now recall how this worked before. So before what we did is, is we multiplied this out, and let, let's take the case one and n equals 6. Then we get, we get a 2 to the n terms. We're going to get an x to the 6th. We're going to get an x plus x. We're going to get x to the 5th, y plus x, 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 y, x, et cetera, all the way up to y, y. So what we end up getting is 2 to the n terms, which are words in the x's and y's. And the number and, and, uh, and the coefficient of x to the k, y to the n minus k, was the number of these words that had exactly k, um, k x's and n minus k y's. So, so this is the number of words of length n with k x's and n minus k y's. And so that was the proof. Now, this is inherently, a, a com this proof has a combinatorial flavor. So this is why I said in the beginning, the, the, the type of combinatorial proof that we're doing is not the only type of combinatorial proof. It's not wrong to say that this, this proof that we did is not combinatorial. But we're still going to use our version now, where we're going to count a set two different ways. Because there's a certain sort of satisfaction that goes along with, with that argument. But to do that, we're going to assume that these things are whole numbers. Before I go further, I want you to give this some thought. See if you can come up with a set of things that we want to count that are counted different ways by these different expressions. It's not obvious. So I encourage you to pause this video, take a minute or two, and see if you can come up with it. Welcome back. So did you come up with a set to count? Well, if you did, it's probably different from this one, though it likely has the same flavor. So in a class with n students, suppose that each student must solve one homework problem. There are x calculus problems and y combinatorics problems to choose from. How many different possible outcomes are there? So one way to solve this, I'm going to call this method 1, probably the easiest one is each student has um, x, oops, almost wrote the wrong thing, x plus y choices, right? So that means that, since these are all independent, there are x plus y to the n total choices. So that's one way to count this, and that's, of course, the left-hand side. So the other way, how do we count the same thing this way? So with a little bit of thought, notice that well, we can think of the total number of choices as being partitioned by how many students to solve a calculus problem. So in other words, the total number of ways is is the number of ways if k equals 0 students solve a calculus, choose a calc problem, plus the number of ways if k equals 1 students solve a calc problem, plus the number of ways if k equals, well, we've got to be careful here, k equals 2 students choose a calc problem, plus, etc., number of ways if k equals n students solve a calc problem. So notice that in general, if we have k students, exactly k students who solve a calc problem, there are n choose k ways to do this. So this is the number of ways that k 
hey, oh, students, number of ways, let me say, to select, not that, to select K students to solve calc problems. And now, each of those K students has X choices. So each, each student has X choices of what problem to solve, so X to the K total. And then there are N, N minus K remaining students, and they each have Y choices. Of, remember, they have Y combinatorics problems to solve. So um, each remaining student has Y choices. So Y to the N minus K in t total. So that's, that's the end of the proof right here. So just... I'm going to write it differently. This is, I don't know which one's better, but so, so here we have n, so there are n choose zero ways to choose those zero students. And then those zero students have x choices, so that's x to the zero choices. And y, and the, and the n remaining students have y choices each. So this is n, n choose zero times, so this is the number of ways. Um, if there's one student, then that means there is n choose one way to choose that one student. That one student has x choices, and the remaining n, student, n minus 1 students have y choices, and then so forth. This is n choose two ways to pick the two students to solve the calc problems. Those two students will have x choices each, and then the remaining n minus 2 students have y choices each. And so, so forth, we add this up, and finally we get n choose n, x to the n y to the zero. And that's the end of the proof. Okay, the next proposition should look a little familiar, but a little different. So if we take the sum from k equals zero up to n of n choose 2k, then we get two to the n minus one. So a few comments about this before we begin. So compare this to what we have seen, the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k, we got two to the n. So several comments. First of all, th this first thing, let me just do n equals eight for an example. So if we do this, then what we're getting is we're getting that eight choose zero plus eight choose one plus eight choose two plus eight choose three, and I'm just gonna Skip ahead all the way up to 8 choose 7 plus 8 choose 8. This is equal to 2 to the 8, which is 64. Now, the second one, I'm going to use a red star for this. Notice that because of the 2Ks here, that this bottom number must be even. So we're skipping over the odd term. So this is 8 choose 0 plus when k equals 1, we get 8 choose 2, plus 8 choose 4, all the way up to 8 choose 8. Although, technically, the way I've written it here, it, it goes, so there's still n terms, so this is going to actually continue beyond, so when 2k is bigger than n. So, so, so technically, as I've written it, we get 8 choose 10, all the way up to 8 choose 16. But recall that these things are, are all equal to 0 because there are n choose k is equal to 0 whenever k is bigger than n because there are 0 ways to choose 10 things from a set of 8. They're all distinct. So we, so we can just ignore these. Um, so an alternate version of this, if, if you prefer, could be n over 2. Although it's a little, you got to be careful with this if, if n is odd. So it's probably easier to just write it like this, the way it is. Okay, so that, that's what this is saying. It's saying that if, if you add up every other n choose k, then you get half of the total sum. 
Uh, this, is, this is one half of times two to the n, and that seems reasonable. Maybe, you know, it's not absolutely clear that you should get half. You should get about half, but this is saying that, yes, you do get exactly half. And, of course, a corollary of this is going to be that if you take, if you add up the, the odd terms, so n choose 2k plus 1. So this is how you add up the odd terms that you must also get 2 to the n minus 1 as well because the, all of the terms, this here is equal to that plus that, the even terms plus the odd terms. Okay, so let's get started. How do you think this goes? Can you come up with a set that this might count? Once again, I encourage you to pause the video and give it a minute or two thought. Of course, you're on your honor to do this. Here's one solution. How many ways can we select an even number from a group of n? So one way to do this is to take the number of ways to pick zero people plus the number of ways to pick two people plus the number of ways to pick four people and add these up and what you'll get is the sum k equals zero so we're, we're adding up the n choose 2k from k equals zero to basically n over two but as I said before it doesn't hurt to, to bump it up to n so that's that's method one Okay, now the right-hand side, why does this also count the number of ways to select an even number of people from a group of n? Okay, so, so here's what we can do. Let's, let's consider, let's consider an n, oops, an n element. And let's say question, true, false, quiz. So, so question one is include um, person, person one, include person, person two, and so forth, include person three. Do we include each of these people? And then we go down to person n minus 1 and person n. So, so here's, here's our quiz. So for the first one, we can answer it true or false at will. The next one, we can answer true or false. So we, so we can freely include person 1, person 2, person 3, we can answer, and so forth. And all the way up to person n minus 1, we can answer these however the heck we want to, but once we do, we don't have any choice over the last person. If we have included an even number of people, then we have to exclude the last person because we need to select an even number of people. So that is forced. Conversely, if we, if we have an odd number of people selected after n minus 1, then we have to include that last person. So there are 2 to the n minus 1 uh, choices for how to select n minus 1 people, and then the last one is forced. So if I were to write this up you know, nicely, I would actually say that in a sentence. Here I'm, I'm taking... I'm I'm drawing this with notes. That's not a per, that would, would not give you full credit for a homework assignment or an exam. Maybe an exam because there's time pressure, but definitely for a homework assignment, I would want you to use complete sentences and not just draw and sketch it like I'm doing here. But that's something you can do once you get the mathematical idea. Then the rest 
isn't too bad. Okay, here's our next one. K times N choose K is equal to N times N minus 1 choose K minus 1. Now this is not the kind of thing that you're going to look at and say, oh, obviously that has to be true. It's not obvious at all. But if we think about these things the right way, it will fall right out. So this is obviously much more subtle than the first few things that we've seen in this lecture that I think were pretty obvious. Okay, so what do you think we want to count? What set? Again, please pause the lecture, if you don't mind. Take a minute and see if you can figure it out. And I'll be right here. Okay, welcome back. Here's one solution. How many ways can we select a committee of K people from a group of N with one designated chair? So the left-hand side... So here I think I'm just going to write, write, up, write it up here. So this is the number of ways to choose the committee from a group of n and choose k. And then we have, once we do that, we have k different ways to choose the chair. So this is the number of ways to select the chair. So that's the left-hand side. Alternatively, what we could do is we could, first of all, select the chair right away. So we could, if we do that, then we have, uh, this is the number of ways to select the chair first. So I should probably say over here, select the chair, I should say from the committee. So let's suppose that we, we first select who's going to serve as chair, and then we have to fill out the remainder of the committee. So in that case, we have n minus 1 people remaining, and we need to fill k minus 1 seats. So this is the number of ways to fill the remaining k minus 1 uh, seats in the committee. So if I were to summarize this, I think I'm pretty much done here. I've gotten the point across, but method 1 I would say select the committee first, then select a chair. So if we do that, again, we get and choose K choices and K choices. And method two is select the chair first, then fill out the committee. So there would be n ways to select a chair, and I said then fill out, and there are n minus 1 remaining people who need to fill k minus 1 spots. Isn't that neat? So notice that in a lot of these proofs, I'm not using the, you know, n choose k is not the number of ways to choose a k element subset from a set of n. I'm actually using, like, real situations, because I think it's, it's more intuitive that way. And it's definitely easier to read. So committees of, of people instead of subsets of, of a set. Okay, here is our next example. So this says, well, now we have an n here. So as before, k has to be no more than n, but now m has to be no more than k. So this says n choose k times k choose m is equal to n choose m times n minus m choose k minus m. So this is something that is not at all obvious. If you look at 
Um, so, well, one way to prove this is with a combinatorial proof, which is what we'll do, but you know, it's actually probably not that bad to prove it directly, algebraically. So sometimes the combinatorial proof is, is easier. Sometimes the algebraic proof is easier. It just depends. Um, usually the combinatorial proof, I hope you agree, is a lot more elegant than the algebraic proof. And so here, for example, let, let's, do, let's prove this algebraically first. So the left-hand side is n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. And then the next one is k factorial divided by m factorial times k minus m factorial. And that has to be equal to the right-hand side, which is, well, let's, let's see. n factorial divided by m factorial times n minus m factorial times n minus m factorial divided by k minus m factorial. And then what's this minus that? That's n minus k times n minus k factorial. So let's see what things cancel. So the k factorials cancel there. We have n minus m factorials cancel there. Um, and now look what's left. So it actually works. So we have an n factorial. So both sides, we have an n factorial on top. And on the bottom, we have an m factorial, n minus k factorial, and a k minus m factorial. So this wasn't hard at all. It's, it's a little bit messy. You know, combinatorial proof is a lot more elegant. But the combinatorial proof isn't hard either. So let's think about what set is counted by both of these things. Now, it's not hard if you, you know, if you don't see it, it's hard. And a lot of times, these things will be like this. Like the, if you don't see it, it's not at all clear. So yeah, you can try the algebraic method. But if you can come up with a clever set, then you're home free. OK, so can you think of one? Again, feel free to pause. Otherwise, I am about to move on right about now. So given a group of n people, how many ways can we choose a size k committee and a size m committee? OK, well, look at the left-hand side. We can first of all select the committee of size k. And from that, then we can select the size m subcommittee from the k. So this is, so the left-hand side is how to do that if we select the committee first and then the subcommittee. Alternatively, we can, this is like a generalization of the last one, we can, first we can select the subcommittee from the n people, and then we can fill out the remaining members of the committee. So we have to select k minus m people from the remaining n minus m people. So let me just write that down. So method one, which is the left-hand side. The number of, of ways to select the committee first times the number of ways to select the subcommittee. So there are, again, there are n choose k ways to select that committee. And then there are k choose m ways to select the subcommittee from the k people who are, who are on it. Of course, method, method two, which is the right-hand side, is the number of of ways to select the subcommittee first. And of course, there are n choose m ways to do that. And then once we do that, this is the number of ways to uh, fill out 
or to select the remaining members. And of course, there are k minus m members that have to be chosen from n minus m people who remain. So I'll leave it up to you as to whether you prefer the algebraic or the combinatorial proof for this one. Here is our last example. And this is especially for all of you who just left our previous example thinking, you know what, I actually prefer the algebraic proof. There's no need to do the combinatorial proof because you can make the case that that was easier. You just you know, checked fractions and canceled things instead of actually writing out a proof. But you know what, good luck, good luck here. This is also something where you could, in theory, prove this algebraically both ways, but it's just gonna get really nasty if you try it. So this is actually called van der Bonde's identity. I don't know if I said that correctly, sorry, sorry if I didn't. So once again, same restrictions on m, k, and n. It says that m plus n choose k is the sum from j equals zero up to k of m choose k times n choose k minus j. It's not at all clear looking at this, what this is really saying or doing, you know, why this should be true. So, so this is where the common trope proof will actually help us understand what this is saying. Okay, so any idea? Any ideas as to what sort of set we want to count? Probably not, so you know, I'll give you a hint. So the left-hand side, we are selecting K people, maybe a size K committee, and up here, M and N, two, two different, think of two different groups. Okay, pause it, see if that will help. If not, I'll see you on the other side momentarily. Okay, how many ways can we select a size K committee from a group of M men and N women? Well, clearly, one way to do that is the left-hand side. So I'm going to say method one is, is obviously just M plus N total people and we are gonna choose K of them. There we go. Okay, so how does the right-hand side establish this? Okay, well, we can ask how many men are on the committee? Let's say that there are J men on the committee, so J has to be between zero and K. So this term here counts this term right here counts the number of ways to have J, J men on the committee. And then we obviously have to have K minus J women on the committee. So, so the total number of ways is we just have to add that up from zero to K, all the possibilities. We could have either zero men, one man, or all the way up to K men. So we, we add those things up. So let me write that down. So method, oops, method two is number of ways to have J equals zero men. And then so K minus J women on the committee plus the number of ways to have J equals one men and K minus J women plus et cetera, all the way down to the number of ways to have J equals K men and K minus J or K minus um, J equals zero women. So I should you know, probably say, just remind you that, that this here is, is just K and this here is K minus one. 
Okay, so here there are m choose zero ways to pick the men. There's we're picking zero men from m, and then there are k minus j. So there there are k minus zero ways to pick or the k minus zero or k women to pick from n. Here there is one man to pick from m, and there are k minus one women to pick from n. And we add this up all the way down to here where we have m choose k because we have k men, or we have k, we have to pick k men from m total, and then of course we have zero women on the committee from n. So this, of course, this is just equal to that sum up there. So there we have it. This is a combinatorial proof of this identity, and I hope you will agree with me that this is much, e much easier than any sort of algebraic proof. Okay, so I said this in the beginning, but if, if you like this topic, I highly recommend you to check out Art Benjamin and Jennifer Quinn's book, Proofs That Really Count. It is available as an ebook in many university libraries. Um, it's also not that expensive. It's, it's on Amazon. Also, the scope is a lot more broad than what we saw here. There's just, there's one chapter, I think it's their chapter five, on combinatorial proofs involving binomial identities. It's like n choose k stuff. The rest of the book is on a whole bunch of different combinatorial identities and combinatorial proofs. I think you'll really like it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Finally, I want to leave you with the thought that these are tricky. They take practice. Most of you, if you watch this video, you haven't seen these before. You probably didn't do very well when I said, pause the video and see if you can come up with this yourself. That was for practice. It's worth trying, but practice makes perfect. And these can be frustrating because if you don't get it, you don't get it. And you see the answer, and often it's like, oh, that wasn't that bad in the first place. So don't get discouraged. That's perfectly normal. These things do take practice, and you will get better with them the more you do this stuff.